Silver House Fly Bombs. Today we're going to tie a staple of late summer fishing, for trout especially, and that is the ant. Uh, this is a version of foam ant. Uh, it's a larger version. I tend to fish the carpenter ant sizes more just because I can see them better. Uh, so when uh, they're keying on ants, I'll, this is the ant that I'll tend to go to. I can see it better. I can uh, keep it afloat better. But uh, that's not to say that smaller versions aren't as effective or more effective in, in a number of times. Uh, this is just the one I prefer to fish. Uh, I start off with a size 14 caddis emerger hook. I tie with a caddis emerger on these ants because I like the wider gape. And let's go over how we start it. Caddis emerger hook and 6 aught black thread. Start your thread, move it to the eye, wrap a pretty good base. I do a double layer base on these because I think it grabs the foam. You can, you can use super glue or varnish as well, but usually if I just tie a little bit of a heavier base, it grabs the foam pretty good. And then I bring my, so I tie my base back to about the point of the bar, just short of the head. I'll bring it to about the one-third port part or two hook two eye lengths behind the eye and then I'm gonna start with foam I use thin razor foam I'll buy a strip and I'll use a ruler and I'll cut it an eighth of an inch thick see if I can get that focused I cut it an eighth of an inch thick and I'll cut an entire Ziploc bag full usually one whole package of black razor foam and uh, that'll last me through at least a year I tie a number of different patterns with this foam, so uh, I do use it considerably. And I'm going to start off by tying. I tie in at the one third port part, and I leave about a half an inch of foam. And I wrap it down, and I'll wrap back to leave about an eighth of an inch gap in the body and I'll bind it down pretty good right there and next I'll bend my foam back and I'll tie a smallish head not a real large head I position it where I want it before I get too far along And then for the back side, I'll fold it over again and I'll tie in my abdomen about twice the size of the head. I'll lash that down. Don't be afraid to bind it down pretty tight. You can manipulate this foam. The only thing you really want to be concerned with is that you keep it on the top of the hook. Then I'll come into the middle and I'll trim off. And then you can bind that trim, that trim the butt end down pretty good. Next, I'm going to tie in my hackle. This is a size 14 merger hook. I use a size 12 dry fly hackle. I want the legs to be prominent. And I'll tie my butt end over the midsection of that ant. And bring my thread to just behind the head. And we'll palmer our hackle forward. I tend to get three to four wraps. This one's going to give me four. I don't take it all the way to the head. Take it just short of the head. Put four tight wraps. And then trim off your butts. Couple security wraps. Then I take my orange, fluorescent orange Antron yarn, single strand. Multi-fiber, but single strand. Trim my butt even. 
And what I do is I sweep back the hackle and then do a pinch wrap. Try that again. Just enough to grab it. I'll wrap back into it so I know I got a hold of it good. Keeping it centered up top. A couple extra wraps. And a whip finish. And if I've trapped any, I'll come in now, trim them off, start with. And what I do is I bring my my yarn to the center of the rear of that the ant, the abdomen, and I'll cut it off even with right about the middle, right there. I keep my hackle on top. A lot of people will trim the top hackle. I keep my hackle because then once you tie in this orange, that hackle will keep that orange up visible a little bit longer. Even when it's wet, it'll get intertwined with that hackle. And the hackle will help to separate it like a fan. You'll be able to see it good when it drifts. And then I cut the bottom. I'll come in from the bottom. Trim mid-length to the gape of the hook. Trim the bottom off. And then a small dab of head cement behind the head. Keep everything honest and secure. And that's it. A very easy pattern to tie. A very durable pattern. Like I said, you can tie this in many sizes. I like to tie it. I call it a carpenter ant because that's basically the only ant that's this big. I only tie it in one size, size 14. It's very prominent on the water. Fish don't miss it. I don't miss it. It's caught a lot of fish over the years. When the fish are looking for terrestrials, this pattern does very well for me. Hope it adds to your box also. Good luck. See you on the water.